Ready, Freddy. <laughs> From Microbe TV, this is Q&A with A and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me tonight... From Chevy Chase, Maryland, Amy Rosenfeld. Hello, Amy. Hi, Vincent. How are you today? I'm very well. How are you? Have a good day? Mm. <sighs> do you ever have a good day? I do. I do have good days, and today not so good. But I did get two phone calls from my two favorite people in New York. Or, yeah, two favorite, two second favorite people in New York. They call in the morning and they call in the afternoon. Is that Ian Lipkin and somebody else? Ian and Nisha, yes. Ian and Nisha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They call in the morning and then they call in the afternoon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to, well, it's Thursday, but normally our Wednesday evening virology corner of the world. And if you notice, when we signed on, I was chuckling because even in the pre-show, Amy makes me laugh. It's not just during the show. It's good. Right? And I want to thank our moderators before we get going. Les is here tonight and Steph is here and Vanity Nutrition is here. I know that Tom can't make it tonight. Frank is here. That's great. And that does it, right? That just about does it. Thank you all for coming and moderating on an odd night. So I was at Ithaca this week at Cornell University College of Veterinary Medicine giving a keynote address at a student-run symposium. And um, I had a great time because I always like meeting students and talking to them and seeing what's on their mind. <laughs> Amy, I said to one of them at dinner, David Baltimore told me, if you can think of doing something else other than science, do it. You should only do science if it's the only thing you can think of doing. And this one graduate student sitting across, she looks at me and she goes, I, I could think of a couple of things I could do. I said, well, then, then you should do it. I said, what are they? And one of them was being a yoga instructor. I don't know why. Okay. You, I mean, I can see that people like yoga, but... You know, it's a big thing from scientist to yoga. Anyway, in some respects, it, it is. A, it in was, some uh, respects, it's not. So anyway, that's why we're here on Thursday, because I just got back this morning, and uh, I did three podcasts in Ithaca, an episode of Immune, which is dropping at midnight, and two episodes of TWIV. I'm not sure when I'm going to release them, but they're both really good. You're going to like them. And so I make content for you folks, not just you here tonight, but everybody else who listens. But that's what I like to do. I like to make stuff that you enjoy. So enjoy. And for the next two weeks, I'm here. So we'll do this Wednesday next week and the following week. And then I'm going to be in the UK at the beginning of September. I don't know what we're going to do there, Amy. I mean, in terms of live streaming, because I'll be there from Monday to Saturday that week. All right. Am I talking too much? No, I'm just processing. Uh, I got Amy so new when are you gonna make new? When are you going to make new video about how vaccines work and stuff next week? Uh, next week I'll, I'll make some videos. Yeah, I want to make another polio video and I want to um, oh, make well, a video on... Oh, you this time on polio. I want to talk... I want to make a video that says polio eradication is doomed. Oh, really? You agreed with me. I ran that. it by you. I ran it by you. I know. You. I'm just curious as to where you hear, heard that, that it was doomed. Because usually what, you, Let me tell you how it usually works. Usually you say, no, 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 Amy. You don't understand. It's not doomed. Here's but how now it works, it's Amy. doomed. I talk to you for weeks at a time. And initially you disagree with me. And I say, no, I'm right. And then more I think about it, I come your way. Okay. Eventually I come over. So I, you just I need to have some patience. Okay. I understand. But, um, yeah, I want to – the polio situation is very dire because it – it's not dire because this one guy got paralysis. It's too bad for him, but it's not a threat to most people because vaccination is going to take care of it. But the problem is – The vaccinations. That we can't stop vaccinating. 
Are you getting Never. sound out of your computer or your earbuds? Because now I hear an echo again. You hear me? I in thought your it earbuds? was out of my earbuds. What do I push? There you go. Hello? Yeah. Where do I push? You make sure in the uh, you've selected your earbuds as the output mechanism. And close Safari if you've got a window. I don't have open. anything on. So is it the camera or the default microphone? Because the earbuds are plunked into the bottom of the microphone. Yeah, so you should select the microphone for the ear for the in and out. So the ATR, the U, the Q2U should be your input and output. Okay. Not under preferences. Yeah, that too. Instead of so, chatting, we should have fixed this before. I'm very sorry, folks. Where do I go under preferences? Sound. Apple system preferences. Oh, so, Apple system preferences. Okay. Yes, and then go to sound. And for the output, it should be your microphone. And for the input, it should be your mic because your headphones are plugged into your mic. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's it's both. Yeah. I bought Amy new head uh, earbuds so that her buds wouldn't run out of battery. Yeah, it's good. See, I've got fancy earbuds now. Yeah, okay. I've got it. It's all good. Very good. All right, let's take some questions. Questions? Questions? Why Why are there questions in this program? So this morning I released TWIP, and Thomas has already listened to it. That's good. Excellent. And Pete says, watching TWIV 927, interesting new edit style, giving Merchlinsky full screen when he's talking. You did that for Offit, too. Yeah, I did it for Offit. I, I did it because now I have high-quality video of everyone, so... I can do that. And I think it's good when you have a guest, and especially when they talk for long periods, to have the focus on them. You don't need to see Dixon, you know, playing with his beard or something, right? Well, not only that, but it's really like uh, the importance of the guest. Like some guests I don't really need that close up. You're not going to name any names, are you? No. But Offit and Malinsky, you need close up. Um, anyway, I, Merch, I thought Merch Linsky looked a little bit like Robert De Niro. Yeah, uh, what's up with the Hawaiian shirt? I know, but I thought he was a little scary because he's really serious, right? <laughs> but yeah, but great. I like that about him. But that's no, I, I but, but that's the yeah. uh, that's the stuff I like about him is that he's he's very serious and he not, but he's also very blunt. It's good. Yeah. Uh, I don't like the fast talkers. And gives you good like answers. I don't like the fast yeah. talkers. I think it was a good, uh, it was a good episode. Hey, we have a new listener tonight. Finders Weepers, the first time. Could you discuss ex excess death statistics? What is that? Excess death certificate statistics of what? Of, of anything that that kills people. If you want to know how often it's killing people, and you don't have a good way of measuring it. And you use excess deaths. So, for example, let's use. And we actually there was a paper published on this uh, last year, which calculated excess deaths in many countries globally from COVID. Excess COVID deaths. So normally, how do you figure out how many people have died? It's not easy because not everyone has on their death certificate died of COVID. It may be something else. So the and and then there's reporting differences and so forth. But what you can do is the death the death rate of countries is usually pretty steady. And then anything that exceeds that is called the excess death. So when something happens like a pandemic or a flu outbreak every year causes excess deaths, there are these curves that uh, uh, show the the amount of expected deaths from influenza every year and then you have excess deaths in some seasons when there when there are more deaths anyway it's really the accepted way of figuring out the burden of you know a virus in this case it could be other things as well it's much more accurate than just depending on uh, hospitals to report deaths it, it's just not accurate enough and so interestingly in that paper and we did this on twiv if you search for excess deaths and twiv you'll find it um you know, some countries, the excess deaths are actually less than they're reporting for COVID, right? And then in some cases, How they're is that more. possible? Yeah, there's a reason for it, which I've forgotten now, but it's in, they explained it in the paper. It's quite interesting. 
I mean, some people, some countries under report, and uh, some countries do a good job as well. So that's excess deaths is actually a very good way to measure the impact of catastrophes, if you put it that way. Okay. Uh, if if uh, we send Amy a late birthday card at the incubator, will she get it? Of course. <laughs> You could send it to the incubator, and then I'll pass it on to her. She's coming by in, uh, what, the first week of September? Labor Day, right? Yeah, Labor Day. You're coming day. to New York, so I'll give it to her then. So yeah. so measure it. I mean, send it. <laughs> Mail it. <laughs> measure yeah, it. I'm coming. I'm coming on Labor Day. Well, that weekend, whatever that is. What in the name of fungus is going on on a Thursday night. Could it be another episode of Q&A, special fungal edition? So, special polio edition. <laughs> special polio edition. Yeah, special polio edition. So R Rob said it, we should mention fungi often. Can you think of something fungal just off the top of your head? I eat a lot of mushrooms. You do? Mm-hmm. You like mushrooms? Mm-hmm. So I ate a lot of like mushroom ragu and roasted portobellas with goat cheese since I don't eat regular cow's cheese yet. Cool. Mushrooms are good. Uh, did you like my monkeypox video? I didn't look at your monkeypox video. I think instead of making a monkeypox video, you need to write the newsletter for the incubator. That's more important to me. Okay, please. <laughs> Is that being too harsh, Amy? No, but she promised she'd do it when it's since the beginning of the summer, and it's not done yet, and needs to be progressed. She doesn't want me to yell at her, that's for sure, because that's a kiss of death. Mm. A recent study linked milk to drinking to prostate cancer. I, this is out of my lane, folks. Not a cancer guy. How much would milk's pro-angiogenic factor be the cause of prostate cancer? I don't know why. I mean, you need angiogenesis to supply a tumor, but I don't know why it would induce it to begin with, right? I don't know. I'm not a cancer person. I think milk drinking is a difficult one because it's it could be other things besides the milk. So I'm I'm not buying it. But it's not my it's not my uh, area. Okay, not my area. It's it's out of my lane, and I will stay out of my lane. <laughs> I will stay in my lane. I'm sorry. I will stay uh, in out my, of my lane. lane. It's nice to see Dan Griffin on Channel 5 News. Good. He should be. And as I said last time, I don't know why he doesn't have a million views of his weekly clinical report. Why doesn't he have a million views? Why do these other jerks on YouTube have millions of views? I don't get it. The world is not just. Well, we knew that already, right? I say mm -hmm. this too often, so Amy's not going to take the bait. Nope. No. CNN says CDC announces sweeping reorganization aimed at changing the agency's culture and restoring public trust. Okay. First of all, uh, Rachel needs to go. Now, I know everyone likes her. Female really? head of CDC. Many it's people great, dislike but her. She's not appropriate. She's not a public health person. She's an administrator with a little bit of HIV expertise. It's not the person you need there. You need an you need a public health person, and and that's what we don't have heading public health agencies, which is what the CDC is. And so they need to bring in public health people, and the agency's culture is not going to be reorganized overnight. That's ridiculous to even say you can reorganize the culture. Uh, so you need to get public health people running. You need to have a plan. You need to not hide data. Now, the reason why this is happening is because I trashed them on Twitter this week. Did you know that, Amy? That's the rumor. Yeah, that's the yeah. rumor. <laughs> that's why the reorg happened, because I, I was highly critical. <laughs> that's, that's the rumor. <laughs> I, I mean, I, there's no question that CDC needs to be reorganized, but I'm sure they're not going to do it right. Because the first thing they need to do is get people running it who know public health. And Rochelle does not. I'm sorry. I don't have anything against her. But you need a public health person, not an administrator. Put them somewhere else in the org, not running it. 
So good luck. I have zero faith that it's going to make any difference. Let me give you an example. This current polio stuff in the polio virus in the sewage, right? They will not release the genome sequence of the virus. Why not? What's the problem? We scientists want to look at it and analyze clock, it because then they, the molecular clock analysis would be done, and they and they'd find out that the virus has actually been circulating for way longer than they thought. So if you just do a back of the envelope calculation, does that sound familiar? Like Peter Daszak's phrase, back of the envelope <laughs> yes. calculation. Yes. yes, back of the envelope. So if you yes. just do the back of the envelope calculation, so they're harping on it coming from OPV, from a patient that's been vaccinated with OPV. And we all know that there are countries being using OPV today. But that's not the important part. The important part is that today and since 2016, OPV is no longer trivalent. It's bivalent. They've taken out the type 2 component. So if it came from somebody who was who directly vaccinated by OPV, it has mm -hmm. to be circulating for a minimum of six years. So what you're saying is that they don't want someone else to calculate the clock and and reveal that. They I just don't know what they want, but I'm just saying that by definition, if you're saying it came from a vac uh, directly from somebody who, who recently was administered OPV, that OPV administration was six years ago, because even though we have OPV and like many countries use it, let's just take country X. So country X is giving OPV. Do you think that the manufacturers of OPV are going to sell country X trivalent OPV? No, they're selling them bivalent OPV, and they've been selling them bivalent OPV since 2016, when type 2 was removed. Therefore, if you're going to claim it's a newly vaccinated person, it has to be at least six years or longer in circulation. The other thing I was complaining about this week is they won't give out the protocol for screening wastewater for polio virus. Why not? They want to do it themselves. This is a big problem. They want well, to they control don't want to do all it. the they test kits. They don't want kits. to do it. But no. the problem, but the thing is, as you said, they want to do it themselves. No, they don't want to do it. So why don't they, they hand want the to, protocol? Because, then it, they, because they don't want anybody to do it. Because if you have samples from years ago, you can figure out whether or not polio has always been circulating. It so has like some always guy, been. It right. Has always and been. that would that would demonstrate that they have wasted billions of dollars with eradication. This that the idea that you could eradicate polio has been flawed since the beginning because there's three things that you needed to have to eradicate. You should add, remember we had this conversation you're adding them to your lecture and to the book. Yes. Humans are the only host. Correct. Lifelong immunity. Correct. And you must be completely symptomatic. There's no asymptomatic portion of shedding or the infection. Everybody gets symptoms. That's not the case for polio. Therefore, that even strengthens my point that the that the virus has been circulating way longer than a year. Because let's say you say, okay, well, the person wasn't recently vaccinated. He picked it up on his travels, yeah. right? So yeah. that's fine, but then it still means that the vac that the virus was was in the environment way longer than you anticipated. So the virus is way more stable than you anticipate. So once again, if I have wastewater and I do the testing, I can figure out how long it's stable, and therefore I've wasted however many billions of dollars of eradication. Well, I would say that until we realize that Sabin two circulates as effectively as it does we were still thinking about eradicating that wasn't you know when the eradication program began we didn't know that well yeah i understand that 1989 you can make mistakes but in 2000 you can't make the same mistakes that you made in 1989. so what amy is saying is that we're going to have to immunize forever against polio because if you stop these circulating vaccine derived viruses will infect and cause polio so you cannot stop because what we have done is simply replace wild type virus with vaccine virus. Is no, we've a... just replaced wild type capsid with vaccine capsid. Yes. Okay. Okay. You're being so technical now, young lady. 
I'm a technical girl. Yes, that's the way it works. Isn't wasn't that a song, Technical Girl? I don't know. It's being facetious. You know who I'm talking material about. Material right? girl. Material is girl. The song. Okay, so that's your version of material girl. Anyway, I'm not uh, some I'm not optimistic about I'm not optimistic about the CDC changes. And part of the problem is getting something done by committee never works. You need to have an Amy on the on the thing. Okay. They don't want me. <laughs> they, do, they do not want me. They well, do that's because you me. want them to do what you say. You don't want to have a committee coming to a conclusion. You want Amy's conclusion, right? No, I just want to cut to the chase and do the right thing. I don't care how the I don't care how it occurs. I just want it to cut to the chase to do the right thing. And many times it's not done. Uh, does UVC kill inactivate monkeypox virus? Well, it, I would guess that it would likely, but it, we would have to try it to know. And I'm not sure that it's been done or if well, it I has, think it, a, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, if it's been done, I'm just not aware of it. That's all. Well, it's a double-stranded DNA virus. And UV is double-stranded DNA are hard to uh, cause lesions. You should talk to Rod. He can tell you all about it. It's not impossible, though. No, it's not impossible, but you probably, it's not as easy to use UVC to inactivate pox as it is to inactivate polio or SARS-CoV-2. That's my point. I do not use a UVC wand when traveling. <laughs> and no, I don't, I don't bring it with me when I travel, no. Is that like the lightsaber thingy from Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> I have a lightsaber here. I know, cool. I've seen it. It's sitting there. You can just about see it, like right there, hiding behind the, the mantle. Anyway, it's really cool. But but I'm going to ask Condit about, or maybe Merchlinsky. I can email him about UVC. That's a good question, N.Y. Cohen. Good. Very good. Uh, Robert Redfield said that he thinks the ship has sailed on monkeypox. Now, what, what does he mean by this? the ship has sailed? Does he even Got know on what a that ship means? And, it met, and it sailed around the world. So in other words, it's out and it's going to be here forever. Is that what he's saying? I don't know. Now, why I, would he know this? Be because he was pretty ineffective as CDC head, and he was pretty ineffective as an AIDS researcher as well. So I wouldn't have used CDC head to begin with, but... He was ineffective as an HIV researcher. He thought you could just pray the gay away. I mean, let's just say he was the guy who, uh, was he, no, what did he do that was screwed up with HIV AIDS? His policy he, was really. His policy was enormously screwed up. He didn't believe that you should give people condoms and stuff. That's right. And he That's thought right. you should pray the gay away. So it's like his reborn Christianity or something over there. I mean, so this like, is really? the thing, Tyler, a guy like that. I don't care what he says about science. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So I give it zero credibility based on his track record. OK, now has the ship sailed? I don't. Is it too late to, to turn it back? I don't think so. I think if we could get vaccine into people, it could be uh, knocked down. But it really depends on what Amy just said. OK. You're not going to eradicate it because there's an animal reservoir. But are there asymptomatic transmissions? We don't actually know. There's some hints that there might be, but it's too soon to tell. If there is, that's going to be tough. So we'll see. This is early days. How can one determine if she or he has been vaccinated with polio vaccine? <sighs> not easily. So I, I have to tell you this, and you're not going to like it, Amy. Are you sitting down? Yeah, I'm sitting down. Do I need to go get a drink? No, 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 no. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Because no, I might need sure. a drink. I'm not sure. I might need a drink if you're going down the avenue that I think you're going down, because then I'm going to say, did you not read my paper? Oh, you know what avenue I'm going down, don't you? And I'm going to say, did you not read our paper? You, you, and therefore, I'm going to need a drink. So this is what Daniel said on the update tonight. Someone what? wrote a letter saying I'm an old guy and I can't. And I think I didn't get a full polio vaccine. 
So Daniel said, okay, you could have your antibodies checked or you could just go get vaccinated. And I think you and should not you, even... Did you not correct Daniel and say not according to Amy's paper? No, I, I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't. I was... I was uh, well, yeah, that was wrong. <laughs> not good. But, uh, I you, don't think it's now worth... Now you owe me a drink or something. This is... Okay, but listen, folks, I'm sure there's some people on this live stream that wonder if they need to be vaccinated. They can't remember if they uh, got vaccinated. were vaccinated, That's they don't have any records. Option. Just get vaccinated, get IPV. There's no downside. It's 100% safe and just get it. Don't do antibody tests because Amy's thing is you don't know if the antibodies are due to polio vaccine or some other enterovirus that you've been infected with over the years. And I have to tell Daniel that now. So let me yes. write it down on my sticky here. Oh my gosh. I, I can't, can't believe, believe you did you I didn't. apologize. You will be no, right for the next apology not accepted. Not good enough. <laughs> Daniel R E antibody test polio. And you will just as an apology, Amy, you will be correct for the next ten minutes, okay? No, I'm always correct. <laughs> anyway, <the> Carol. <laughs> Let's answer Carol's question. So here's the problem. You could you could get an antibody test, a polio antibody test. You could go to a clinical lab and they have them. But Amy's latest paper showed that there's extensive cross reactivity between polio virus and other enteroviruses. So you don't know you don't know if those antibodies are from polio vaccine or some other entero. So in, in our view, it's worthless. But you can people send are, me the money. Send me the money. I need furniture and my lab needs stuff. And my chair is $12,000. So send me the money and I'll hold up the test tube to my head and I'll I'll tell you whether or not you have antibodies because that's about as good as the answer is for the test. Okay. Um, okay, Amy, are you, going to the, are you going to the Washington DC Book Festival in September? Did not know about it. If they send me information about it, yeah, I'll go. How can they get you information? Should they send it to your Twitter account? Should they tweet it? For sure not. For sure not. You don't. For sure not. (laughs) No. For sure not. All right. They should just send you the information and you forward to me. Okay, you could send it to Vincent at microbe TV. Okay. Rob Fun- Fungus wants to know if the CDC considers monkeypox to be an STD. I hope not. I, it would I don't be a think huge it, mistake. That would be a huge mistake. It is not an STD. It's an infectious disease. As Daniel says, it's not a gay disease. It's not an African disease. It's an infectious disease. And there are now sufficient cases um, that have clearly no sexual or Well, kids have it. Kids, people who are not intimate with anyone. Uh, even a dog got it. Yeah, I know. It was a Landsat paper. Yeah. Oh, Ithaca Brewery. Yeah, that's where we went last night for uh, a beer with the students. Yeah, Ithaca Brewery. Unfortunately, it was raining, so we couldn't sit outside, but it's uh, it's got a big cornfield next to it. I'd never, that wasn't there when I was... Um, uh, when I was a student, you went to the other school. You mean Ithaca College? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I won't tell you what we used to call Ithaca College. These these arrogant Cornellians. I won't tell you. Uh, but what I kind of beer it. did you have? Did you have a pale ale? Did you have an IPA? Did you have a stout? Did you have a dark? No, beer? no, no. I, I always have pale ale, uh, pale IPAs. I love IPAs, and they had a cloudy. I forgot what it was called. It was really good. They have a lot of beers on the menu because they they brew them there. You know, it's really good. But um, I don't know. I'm not a beer drinker, but I just no know food. That. So the two weeks in a row now, three weeks, I went to Fort Collins. I go to a beer a, a local brewery run by a former microbiology student, and there's no food. No I snacks. Drink, no. Well, yeah, but I didn't want snacks. I wanted dinner, so I went to dinner. And then last night, the same thing. So I said to my host, I said, I need to go by 7. I need to go get dinner. You can't just drink beer and have dinner. Okay. Okay, so here's here's another one. All right, well, let me just 
do this one first from Lisa. Any truth to reports that vaccinated are more contagious or shedding more virus than non vaccinated What virus are you talking about? Because now we have SARS-CoV-2, polio virus, and monkeypox. Which one do you want to know, It doesn't Lisa? matter. In all cases, getting vaccinated doesn't make you shed more virus. Yeah. Nor are you more contagious. So... For any virus. No, it's true. You're absolutely right. I still would like to know what virus she had in mind. Yeah. Maybe she's just doing a generic question, right? It's fine. It could be. I don't care. Um, All right. This one was asked of of Daniel today. I want to see how you would answer it because it's directed at you. Are you ready? Sure. Amy, Professor Crotty said that if you had COVID a month ago, then a booster is pointless and potentially disruptive to the antibody education the body is still doing. Do you agree? So, so I agree that the booster is pointless, but I don't agree that it's potentially disruptive to the antibody education. But I agree it's pointless. Daniel gave a a rather (laughs) extended answer to this that's fine he's a b-cell person i'm not a b-cell person and he's more like he's more loquacious than i am i'm very laconic steph is a yoga instructor in in my retirement i didn't mean that's to cool. impugn yoga instructors i just you know if you're a phd student and one of your alternative careers is a, i mean you could do it on the side i presume but if you really want to do that do that don't spend a lot of time do, getting a phd and then it's wasted, you know. Well, it depends on what your PhD is in. If it's in like physiology, it could oh, be helpful is, being a yoga instructor. Well, hers is in molecular biology. She's a actually she's a T cell student. She likes she works on T cells, okay? She's an immunologist and she's mm-hmm. uh, you know, what mm-hmm. her, I forgot what her other career thing that she thought she could do was. Anyway. I don't know. Anyway, I, I, <laughs> We hear so much about virus mutations. Do bacteria mutate much? Yes. So do we. Now, p- organisms with DNA mutate less than RNA viruses, but they still mutate. That's why I have bra- green or brown eyes, and Amy has, what color eyes do you have? Green. Because we have mutations that distinguish them. But we, every cell in your body has a different DNA sequence from the next one. We all mutate. It's not a virus thing. It's not induced. It happens randomly. Okay? And, and people who talk about virus mutations in the press don't know what they're talking about. They get it wrong all the time. Even Michael Minna got it wrong a few weeks ago. I pointed it out on Twitter. He got really mad at me. He said I was No, he was just him. nasty. He, he was, was just shamed. nasty. He said I was shaming him. You know, that's a word no, that people use. No, and then he use. went and, and, no, what he did was shaming Yeah, you. I don't want to know about it because I don't, I don't look. I don't look. It's fine. Anyway, every everything mutates. Every living thing mutates. Yeah, but viruses aren't living. The infected cell is living. That's right. Australia abandons lockdowns, mask mandates, indoor crowds, breakdown effect. Okay. Okay, so Ian, the 75 deaths a day, I guarantee you are in unvaccinated people, immunosuppressed people, people over 75. They all could be prevented by early treatment with monoclonal or Paxlovid, right? Or the reason they're dying or vaccination. The reason they're dying is because they their doctors don't treat them early enough. And that's from Daniel Griffin, not from Vincent Racaniello. It takes 500 hours to be certified. Certified for what? A yoga Being instructor. Insane? No, oh. yoga instructor, Amy. Steph just oh. said she's a yoga instructor. That's not oh. a lot of hours. It takes 40,000 hours to be good at anything. That's what, uh, what's his name says, remember? Yeah, I understand. Okay. okay, let's see. All right, how would the monkeypox transmit from human to an animal in which it will establish it? Now, what kind of an animal do you mean? A wild animal? Highly unlikely because... We don't get close to wild animals, right? Mice are. I don't pretty know fast. if it's in your if your skin is shed is shed off. 
If your dead skin is shut off and the virus is within that skin, I would assume it could go anywhere. I mean, you shed skin wherever you go. And you think the mice can eat the skin and then they get infected? I don't know that they eat the skin, but they roll around in it. Hmm. I mean, that's kind of like dust, you know, like half your dust is your dead skin sloughing off. So Merch Linsky didn't think it was a, a risk because you need contact for transmission. As far well, as yeah, know. but that's, yeah. I'm just saying that if you if it just I was understand. like smallpox where you didn't need direct contact, it was just your skin sloughing off onto a blanket and you gave it to somebody else, then sure. I don't see why not. And it doesn't, you th it doesn't have to go directly from you to the animal. I mean, it could go from the an from you to animal A to animal B. I mean, who knows if there are asymptomatic infections in animals? I don't know. Malcolm Gladwell, right? 40,000 hours. Anyway, dog, if you sleep with your dog, you could infect your dog. It's pretty close contact, right? That dog's right next to you. I don't have no dog. You have dog that sleeps with you. Yeah, she occupies my bed and makes it hard for me to move around and roll over. And it's... Uh, it's over. not you. She occupies your bed. It's you're occupying her bed. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> makes you think it's your bed. I'm quite sure so, if I call anyway, up Luna, she's going to say it's her bed. To, to follow up, Rima, Mike Merchelinski said, because it's not air trans airborne it would be hard to transmit to a wild animal but amy's got a good point that if they got in a house and they picked up skin dead skin that could do it so i think the jury is out uh let's see i'm not going to be able to answer this but we'll put it up regarding unsaturated fat and covid19 evidence showing lipotoxicity worsens outcomes covid19 patients i don't i don't know what that means fat it's it's fat poisoning. How does but, that happen? Well, so generally it's talked about in, in the context of vitamins. If you take too many like vitamin A and E, it's fat soluble. So it sits in your fat for the rest of your life and it becomes toxic and it builds up to a toxic level. That's why when people eat too many carrots for vitamin A, they, their skin turns orange. So I guess it's I guess it's potentially possible that some cytokine or some part of the virus could be sitting in the fat deposits of your body and then build up to a toxic level. But I don't mm. know that that's true. I don't know. I I don't know that I've I've not really followed that, so I don't know if that's true. But I assume that's what he's talking about. Uh, Gwen says, Vincent, Amy, do a Q and A by yourself. I don't know if. You because she's got both names here, so. I don't know. I don't know what you want. Why? Are we, we're a team. We don't do this by ourselves. Right? Are you firing me? Did I say that? I said you were a team. We we don't do this by ourselves. I know. I'm just teasing. You're even here for the whole two hours now. But you see, when you lived in New York, you had to go back to your plaque assays. Now you don't. Because you're home, well, right? I could, uh, yeah, but I have work to do. Don't you could worry. always say I goodbye, have... Vinny. That's it. No, I can't always say goodbye, Vinny. That's it. No, no, you you wouldn't do that. You're you're helping to further the education here, right? Yeah. Uh, where will I be visiting? I'm going to Manchester, UK, on September. I'll arrive the sixth, which is a Tuesday, and depart the Saturday. I'm going to the European Society for Clinical Virology meeting. I am doing two podcasts. One about bovine spongiform encephalopathy and one on the mm, you know the the uh, implication of adeno associated virus in this pediatric hepatitis with Emma Thompson it should be fun and i'm sure be interesting. i'm sure Marion Koopmans will be there i always like talking to Marion she's very smart really cool i've never met her but yeah she looks like a cool lady <laughs> it's very cool. Will the choice for NIAD director replacement be exciting and controversial or just a boring internal decision? We, Amy and I have talked about this. We think it's going to be a boring internal promotion. Don't you think so, Amy? Yes. 
Yeah. I don't think it's going to be a controversial or, you know, flashy person. It's going to be someone inside who's been working many years and just gets promoted up and does it quietly and without any public fanfare. And we actually think we know the person. So when it happens, we'll say either we were wrong or we told you so, right? Well, this is news to me, but okay. Okay. Yeah, you and I the other day decided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember. I remember. We know people at NIAD, Amy and me. We know people. We know people. (laughs) We know know people people at NIAD. Doreen. Hello, Doreen. Have a friend, 65, never vaccinated for polio. She's afraid to go to get vaccinated. No, no, no reason for fear. The the shot is harmless. It's it's just an inactivated virus goes into your muscle, boom, and not even much inflammation. So your friend should not be afraid. Tell her I said so, and um, I I would, you know tell anyone to get it because it's fine. And she should do it because the risk of polio is much worse than the shot, right? Because you don't want to get paralyzed. And with virus in the wastewater, that's the risk we have. Would you agree, Dr. Rosenfeld? Yes. Uh, A question about monkeypox transmission. Do you think it can be transmitted by shared yoga mats at the gym? even though the mats are being cleaned before and after use by disinfectant towels. I don't know what a disinfectant towel is. Is it something that would disrupt the lipid membrane? Pretty tough viruses to inactivate. So, yeah, the thing is people lie on these mats. And Why do you have shared mats? Why don't you bring your own mat? Isn't that the thing you do in yoga? So that's, the, that's what I would do. I would eliminate the shared mats, make people bring their own just to be safe. Because okay. I can't say it's not a risk, all right? Because I can imagine someone who, you know, I'm sure you tell people if you have lesions, don't come. But sometimes there are lesions and you don't see them, whatever, and it could get on the mat and then the next person could, could pick it up. And I'm not sure that what you're doing is going to inactivate the virus. We would have to do a study to prove that, Okay. And, and it hasn't been done because nobody thought to do it before. It's probably happening right now at Rocky Mountain Labs, I'll bet, and we'll know soon. Uh, I, could ask, I could ask Vincent Munster because he's the guy who's doing it. Vincent. I don't know. He's busy doing some SARS-CoV-2 stuff. Well, that's what he did. He, so he gave a talk at Fort Collins, and he said, you know, early in the pandemic, we're the ones who – put it on surfaces and showed that the virus lasted so many days. And he said, we're the reason you had to wash your hands. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Really not mom. Hmm. I don't know. I think my mom would disagree with that. She would say I was the reason why you had to wash your hands and have good sanit- sanitary skills, Amy. Are you aware of polio wastewater testing beyond New York? Yes. You, you bet we are. You bet your bippy we are. We are the polio duo here, Amy and me. Uh, What that means is we both have worked together on polio virus over the years. Yes. Perhaps it's best to not test for things we do not want to find. Well, we should find polio because maybe it'll make people get vaccinated if they say it's here, folks. Um, So... That was the that was so perhaps it's best not to test for things we do not want to find. That was more Lynch, right? I was going to say that was the that was the the slogan prior to this, which turned out not to be so good. But hey, everybody makes mistakes. What well, comments are not working? Everything seems to be good here. I, I'm I'm chat. You mean the chat comments? It's all here. I see them here. Anybody else have that issue? I don't think so. All right, let's see here. Sao Paulo. Here, the OPV vaccination dash for kids is already in full swing, and all adults are eligible for fourth COVID doses. Never seen a country so vaccine positive. Well, that's good. Did you know they're using OPV in Brazil, Amy? Yes. Yes, I did. So it's it's, it's, uh, OPV 1-3, right? 
It's used, it's used in a lot of countries, especially in South and Central America and in Africa. Yeah. And parts of Asia too. Yeah. So tell me, Amy, um, how uh, pervasive are, are vaccine derived one and three in the environment? Because like, we know two is really well, th pervasive. three was the so three was was what so vaccine derived three was what was in December and January. Uh, one of the cases from the Ukraine was vaccine derived three, and all of the Israeli initial cases were vaccine three. All right. What about one? Do we ever see one? Vaccine derived. Uh, we do, but mostly we see wild type one. All right. Here, do you know about this? UBC used cryo EM to discover a weakness in all major variants. Antibody. Who's fragment. UBC? University of British Columbia, I would guess. Okay. That's able to attach this site and neutralize each major variant. Thought. Well, that's already been known that there are sites that are cross-reactive, right? Yeah. I mean, they probably just looked at the structure of it, but I, I don't think that's anything new. Not so impressive. Is there an ideal time to get the flu shot? So here's the problem. If you get it now by February, it's... Your immunity yeah. has gone. It's gone. So I would wait a bit because you really don't get into full flu season until really, uh, it depends on the year, November, December. So I'd wait two months. Yeah, that's what I would do. And, you know, that's how I would do it because Amy would say, we have to get our flu shots. And by the time I'd say yes, it would be November, December, right? Mm hmm Are you going to get a flu shot this year? Now, we're, we're apart now. You can't get me to get a flu shot. What makes you think my reach does not go all the way to New York? <laughs> some people underestimate me. Like some people say she sounds drunk. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Should what be kind of mind. earbuds? Fungal earbuds. That's a joke. She yeah, has uh, Westone Audio Pro X10 IEMs in inner ear, whatever monitor in inner ear monitor so westone audio pro x10 and i got them for her because i have westones but also the the wire is very thin and it's easy to wrap around the ear and the one i have here the the wire is too thick and uh, it, it's uncomfortable i don't like it so actually i i got it for her as kind of a test case and if she yeah, liked I like it I would, I would get it myself uh, let's see. I think polio eradication is doomed too. Growing vaccine hesitancy and distrust of expertise. Well, those are probably important factors, but I think we think it's no, doomed they're not important. Factors. You don't think they're important at all? No, because they're universal for everything. So well, the, they're the not vaccine hesitancy factors. is why yeah, the guy the got vaccine, paralyzed. Well, he comes from an environment that has vaccine hesitancy for everything. It's not a polio specific problem. They didn't get pa vaccinated for measles. They don't get vaccinated for SARS-CoV-2. They don't get, I mean, maybe they get vaccinated for tetanus. I'm not sure. But for lots of other vac other infectious diseases that are preventable mm. by a vaccine, they don't. And part of it is a distrust of expertise, but that's not a polio specific problem. A polio eradication is doomed for a philosophical reason. Well, it's it's doomed because the vaccine derived viruses are circulating. There's no way to get rid of them. Well, that's part of it. It's also mm -hmm. doomed because whatever you do, you reseed the population. So you either give IPV and you get infected with either vaccine or wild type and it replicates within your gut to the levels of an unvaccinated person. And so you reseed the population. You give OPV and it still replicates within your gut and you shed reverts, which then can go and infect anybody. The IPV person, which then amplifies them, or a non-vaccinated person, which then amplifies them. It's not well thought out. So you said the other day what your ideal vaccine, trivalent what? 
NOPV? Well, yeah, but there's still problems with it because there's still recombination events that we don't understand that pick up other parts of other viruses. So let's just say that it becomes, it picks up a capsid of like, of some other entero C, like entero C99, then it's just yeah. polio on a new capsid that causes neuro, that causes a, para, a paralysis. So did, did you again, say polio on steroids? Yes. It's polio on steroids. I didn't know that Shane Crotty's dog died. That's too bad. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry, Shane. And yes, Twiv 927 had two pox virologists. Yeah, that's right. It's not the first time we had Bernie Moss and Rich Condit before. All right. Uh, in Detroit, water main break. Yeah, so you have to wo boil your water because you don't know what's getting into the water. That's unfortunate. Twiv927 sound was a little out of sync. You know, on my machine, it looks fine. I, don't, I can't. I spent eight hours editing the bloody thing. Uh, I can't do anything more. Oh, look it's, at, Kip it's Kip and Laura. Kip and Laura. Thank you for your support, Kip and Laura. Really appreciate it. With respect to CDC's recent case of monkey without sexual exposure here in the Bay Area, is it, it is possible that my daughter attended the same outdoor event. So just curious, what do you think about this supposed casual contact transmission? Okay, so I asked Mert Schlinsky. If, if someone has a lesion in their, you know, they're rubbing it, maybe it itches. And then, so that's going to get virus on the fingers. Then they shake your hand and then you put your finger in your nose. The virus will infect the mucous membrane. So that's casual contact. Yes, it can happen. I'm not sure how frequent it is, right? So the, what's the solution? Keep your fingers out of your mouth and your nose and your eyes until you wash them. And I, I'm, I'm guilty of that too. I touch my face way too much. We all do. So we have to try and get used to not doing that. Yeah, they said that for SARS-CoV-2 too. They're all good episodes. Thank you, the Twifty. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I do like all the Twiv episodes. <laughs> this is funny. Blunt people shouldn't wear Hawaiian shirts. This is it funny? He wore a Hawaiian shirt. This is Merchlinsky. Yeah. Yeah, I know he wore a Hawaiian shirt. I thought it was like Magnum PI on steroids on Twiff. But Does you know, Magnum PI I wears a, a Hawaiian shirt? Yeah, I, like I know. somebody was talking about like some, I don't know, we were talking about some 80s show. And of course, like I have no idea what they're talking about. So I looked it up. Guy is like next to a Corvette in a Hawaiian t-shirt or Hawaiian shirt. I was I like, wear, oh, okay. I don't wear Hawaiian shirts. I don't wear Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, well, I don't either. It's like my niece, my cousin's daughter is three and was tie dyeing t shirts, and she's like, "Look at how cool Miriam is tie dyeing t shirts." And I was like, "I don't wear tie dye t shirts." Any death is excess. Well, yes, that's true. No, you so, have to die. But we all die. There's no way around it, and you'd rather not die sooner than later, right? You'd like to have a full life and a happy, productive life. It's not the case. Many people are unhappy. They die early, et cetera, et cetera. Um, have you invited Michael Osterholm to TWIV? Uh, some time ago I did, and he, he just did his best to avoid it. So I said, no, if I invite and you, and you avoid, that's it. I'm not coming back. You get one chance. And why is that? Because there are a lot of people I'd like to have on TWIV, and it, I'm not wasting my time if you're going to play hard to get. I mean, I, I email quite a few people and they never answer. I'm not chasing them down. Maybe if I had someone to chase them down, that would work, but I'm not. Okay. Trial for treating Alzheimer's with allopregnenolone. Do you know anything about that, Amy? No. No, I don't. I'm sorry. But it's out of my lane. People can wear whatever they want. Blunt people can wear whatever they want. Yeah, of course. Anybody can wear whatever they want. I wear what I want. 
Do you wear whatever you want, Amy? Yes. With 927, the idea that monkeypox is localized rather than systemic is interesting. Would, would that mean vaccination wouldn't prevent localized lesion if memory doesn't respond? No, it should, right? Because the immune system is, is systemic, right? The B cells are everywhere. So if you get if you've got a mucosal infection, the, the antibodies are going to be produced and, and restricted, or T cells maybe as well. Uh, sorry, I don't understand why there needs to be an original Wuhan variant included in the next booster with the Omicron variant. Can you help me with the rationale, Amy? Go for it. Well, the w antibodies against the Wuhan variant uh, neutralize all of the other variants except for the Omicron variant with high with high efficiency. Therefore. And antibodies against the Omicron variant do not do well at neutralizing other variants at the same equal high efficiency. So that's the idea of why you would combine the two. That was a beautiful answer. Simple and to the point, Amy. I am simple and to the point, Ben. Plus, you were happy delivering it. I think if you send a Let's message... Let's not get carried away. <laughs> See, if you tell Amy she's happy, she gets defensive, right? <laughs> um, has polio virus from the vaccine been in the sewage systems continuously since its introduction in 1961? Amy? Yes. Depends where... The how often the, the OPV is used, right? Like in some countries, they only gave it three times a year. And if you look in between the giving, the, the in the sewage anyway, the virus is not detectable. But in other countries, when you're doing continuous vaccination, then you can imagine it's always present, yeah. Well, so let's get this straight here. So if I, in Brazil, they gave it three times a year on vaccine day, right? So, and you shed for a, a few months after your vaccination. Some people could shed a few months, up a, a, several months after vaccination. So you imagine that it's highest, closest mm -hmm. to the vaccination days, right? Yes, yes. But I bet you if we took the soil from all of those water beds or sewage, where the sewage spews out, Right. And put on L20 B cells. I bet you there would be some CPE. Probably. Now, I have to explain what L20 B cells are because I'm sure I would actually hmm? bet money hmm? that hmm? nobody knows what they are on this call. What are you talking about? I just use the term L20 B cells. Nobody knows what that is except you and I. That is true Raul, insider. Andy McAdam, Steve Oberstee, anybody who's a person. But they're not on this call. Maybe they're not on this live stream. Give, come on. L20 B cells are mouse cells which were, in which the poliovirus receptor gene was inserted so that it's permanently in there, and they now can be infected with poliovirus. And the cool thing is they're not infected with any other enterovirus, just poliovirus. So you could take feces from someone who has paralysis. Uh, you put them on L20 B cells. If virus grows out, it's poliovirus. Correct, Amy? Yes. And those cells were made by one of my graduate Kathy students, Mendelson. Kathy Mendelson, many years ago. And yes. I did not appreciate their value. Actually, Phil Miner asked for them years ago, and he had the idea that this it would be useful for this because I, I didn't. I wasn't thinking of other enteroviruses. <laughs> I'm with you, Vince, that the same way climate change deniers get so many views, but people like my little non-monetized news and climate. Yeah, they, the extremers get the views. Yep. I don't get it. Okay. Is SARS-CoV-2 a retrovirus? So first of all, we have two issues. We have two errors here. And I'm not just, I'm not trying to shame you, okay? I just like to teach properly. SARS-CoV-2, not SARS-CoV-2. You're making a recombinant there of the virus and the disease. COVID 
19 is the disease. SARS-CoV-2 is the virus. It's not a retrovirus. It is true that retroviruses have RNA, but not all viruses with RNA are retroviruses. Do you know, Amy, what makes a retrovirus? Yeah, it has an intermediate stage of DNA. That's right. It has reverse transcriptase. So uh, if you're interested in retroviruses, listen to my pod that I recorded in Ithaca with Cedric Fischott. Oh, it's so cool. You're going to love it. Okay, yeah, it's not a retrovirus. It's a, a coronavirus, a plus-stranded RNA virus with no DNA intermediate. Is monkeypox a bioweapon? No. Monkeypox was discovered long before uh, anyone thought of bioweapons. So, I mean, are you asking whether someone made it? No, no, someone didn't make it. So, so Gary Whitaker was telling me, Amy, <laughs> this is very funny, feline coronavirus is an alpha coronavirus. See, it's the only one with a furin cleavage site in the spike protein. And he's, he jokingly said, you know, it must have been engineered. And he said, not. Nah, the virus was discovered in 1940 before anyone could engineer any virus. Yep. You get it? I got it. I understood it. Oh, we have 519 people tonight. This is great. Uh, could you hit the like button? You got 228 likes, and we'd like to hit the like because we'd like you to hit the like so that other people are attracted to this conversation and they can learn about viruses and learn properly, not nonsense. Amy, have, you have answered a number of questions by saying that because of lockdown, implying that our immune system was somehow compromised. Please elaborate on how this works. So your immune system needs constant stimulation to expand its repertoire of antibodies and T cells that have pathogens that they encounter. So the next time you encounter them, you are protected. Mm -hmm. And so by lockdown and isolation, you're not giving your immune system the constant stimulation that it needs to make these antibodies and to enhance its ability to weed out things that are not correct, like antibodies or T cells that are targeted against similar epitopes to a pathogen, but are really self. Yeah, many people agree with you, Amy. About what? This idea of exposure trains the immune system. Yeah. Did you it's play in the, the dirt? sterile high pasta. Did yeah. I play in dirt? Yeah, I played you, in dirt. You did? Yeah, actually, I, I even was... had it. I even had a garden up until the age of nine. I had pea plants and tomato plants and stuff. And then nine, I was done, done with the dirt. Now there's no dirt in my future. Uh, well, that's not even true anymore. I, I want to because I go got ahead. a plant. Anyway, by the way, I was told today it's soil. It's not dirt. It's soil. Who tells you it was soil? Michelle Swanson on TWIM today. Yeah, what's the difference between dirt and soil? That dirt is not a nice word. Whatever, uh, it's dirt. I listen, I want to jump ahead. to Someone's telling Carolyn to get an oral polio vaccine. You cannot get OPV well, in the U.S. Well, where are you going to get an oral polio You can't polio get it in the OPV U.S. in the no. U.S. You, you want to go to another country, you can get it. But in the U.S., you only get go IPV. Okay? No OPV. It's better not to get OPV. I disagree with that, but that's okay. You think OPV is okay? I think OPV is better. In what way? I think it's better protection. Yeah, it's I, got you're protection. Right. It's got protection, whereas I think, IPV uh, is not. I think but uh, you have no matter what, you have always the same problem. Yeah, you have reversion, right? Well, not from IPV, from directly from the vaccine, but you amplify everything to a higher degree. When you use OPV? No, when you use IPV. Okay. You amplify everything to a higher degree because you have no immunity in your gut. So all IPV people who get infected with either vaccine or, or wild type amplify virus to the level of a non-vaccinated individual. Yes. 
Uh, TWIF clinical update is neither ID denialist or overly alarmist. That's why it doesn't have millions of views. It's too nuanced. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, so now I should stop thinking about it. You're right. Uh, one more question. Omicron tingling sniffles. Is there any timeline for how long these will last? No, it's fairly variable on, on everyone. It could be weeks or months. It could be years. But, of course, we are only a couple of years out, so we don't know. So the answer is we don't know. You have often said that COVID vaccine protects you from serious illness, not from being infected. What effect does it have on shedding? Reduces well, it, shedding. It reduces shedding, but so few studies have been done using infectious virus, measuring infectious virus shedding, that I would say we don't know a lot. But it, do, it does, at least if you measure PCR, yes, it reduces uh, the quantity of virus that's shed, and it makes it shed for a shorter period of time as well. Amy, do you think the original mRNA vaccines will be discontinued once the bivalent becomes available? Well, isn't the bivalent a combination of the original plus Omicron? Yeah, it is. So as long as there's no immune interference, then you probably... It's exactly what I was thinking. And that's going to have to be looked at in in trials. They're going to have to study people who get the vaccine to make sure it engenders an equivalent uh, response. So I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, polio, Pete. So, okay, here we have a polio question, Amy. Do you think some people claim that polio will never be eradicated as long as OPV is used? Well, of course it won't be because OPV is infectious virus, right? Duh, yeah. that's not very bright. Yeah, it's an I'm obvious listening. thing. Since OPV is now bivalent rather than trivalent, is there much risk of OPV? Yes. One, one in three can revert. Yeah, all of them revert. This is the problem is that people don't understand. All of them revert. They revert with almost similar kinetics, not exact, not exact kinetics, but somewhat similar kinetics. They all revert. The problem is, is that you have a reduced amount of, you see more AFM or more paralysis with some of them versus others. And that really has to do with the host genetics and rever and, and neuro neuropathologies due to polio are not defined by the virus. They're defined by the host and it's not always the same. And it's not going to be one protein. It's going to be like hundreds of proteins. So if you stopped using OPV tomorrow and gave everyone in the world IPV, you would still have OPV circulating indefinitely because yes. the guts yes. of IPV immunized people are susceptible. Yes. So you can't just stop vaccinating because people would get polio. You can't give everybody OPV because then you keep having polio caused by OPV. So you see yeah, what the so situation is? Yeah, you have a small is? number of people who, have, who get paralysis from the vaccine. And right. then you have people who, if you give IPV, continuously shed all of it to wild type levels. Right. Yes. I understand the problem fully. I've, I don't doubt I've that you invested, do. I, I've invested a significant amount of brain power into the problem. I have as well. My brain power, however, does not matter. It's That's been vetoed. True. It's not true. It's been vetoed. My brain power does not matter. It's been but vetoed. It's been vetoed by the CDC? Yeah, by everybody. It's been vetoed. It's fine. I can deal with it. It's caused, it's caused retail therapy. Where the new... Bivalent mRNA vaccines studied as rigorously as the original. Well, no. Well, they've been released in England already, so probably not. No, they haven't been because the, the, the original have been in so many millions of people and they've done follow-up studies, right? So it's not happening if you want to get the original. And I think that's fine. I don't think there's any evidence that an Omicron booster is going to help at all, as we've said multiple times on TWIV. At least and I, I have. To Paul Offit. Paul Offit. Paul Offit addressed it. Go listen to Offit. How are single copy genes identified? Sequencing. 
Yeah, you can sequence, you can clone them out. I identified a single, well, not me, but Kathy Mendelson identified a single copy gene, the poliovirus receptor gene, by just functionally cloning it out, and it turned out to be single copy. So, not hard. I'm Richard, hello, Richard. I'm glad to hear this explanation about polio. I thought it would be useful. Yeah. Yeah. Richard's very interesting. He's very smart. And your recommendation on the CDC, yeah. Glad you like it. Now, I mean, there are people who are going to disagree with us, but that's us. It's fine. Disagreement is the fuel for progress, right, Amy? Yes. All right, here's a good one. I like this. Which viruses have only one host and give you lifelong immunity? <laughs> so let's let's go ah. polio. Polio virus, right? Yeah. Smallpox. Pox. Measles. Measles virus. Now, I think mumps and rubella are one host also. They're related. That No, you can have rubella in bats. Well, not the same one, right? No, I guess not. I'm not sure so, how, so we're, how and we're talking about how human different hosts. it is. We're talking about yeah, human I'm not hosts, sure right? how. Yeah, I'm not sure how different it is because the guy at the FDA is using mumps and or using rubella as a vector for HIV vaccine. So, I'm, and it's a bat rubella, I believe, envelope. What it, so, so a herpes sure. virus is a human virus, but it doesn't give you a lifelong immunity. No, right? It just stays there for your life. You can't get rid of the virus. That's different. Bring up the Saul quote. Love is hasty, but herpes is forever. No. Unlike love, herpes is forever. <laughs> oh, I was close. So is death forever. Like death, no, herpes I keep is hearing, forever. I keep hearing people say that people, they see people who, from beyond, so apparently it's not forever. Oh, that's BS. Just look at the National Enquirer. That's how they make well, their money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But unlike love, <laughs> Elvis is, is on the planet. Elvis has been walking around on the planet for 80 years by now. Unlike love, herpes is forever. One of my favorite sayings. I just love it. Uh, are the sequences from the London wastewater samples in the public domain? I don't believe so. They didn't release them? I don't believe they released the whole genome. Why? Why? I don't think that they thought it was necessary. I don't know. You have to ask. There them. are viruses. They should give us the sequence. There are viruses. Well, they're not, your, they're not my virus. No, you're right. We each have our own virus. <laughs> exactly. My, that my virus has never been to London, so it's not my virus. All right. Um, I, I don't know. I, you have to ask them. I, I'm not sure that, that the WHO wants all of this released. To be honest, Why? Not, as I said, because it does not look good for global eradication. It basically says all right. that we've wasted billions of dollars and could have done something smarter. Okay, you cannot you cannot hide stuff. Okay. Well, I agree. I agree that it should have all been released, and it should all be um, acknowledged now that. This is a problem. And I just listened to a talk yesterday about how, you know, there's this plan about what happens when it gets imported. And I was like, well, you don't really have a plan because your importing is based upon somebody is going to come into the country with paralytic disease. And that's not the case. So you don't really have a plan unless you ask everybody to take a poo at the airport. <laughs> That's right. I don't know. So I don't really know what the plan is. I, to me, there's no plan. Yes. Technical girl. Yes. I, this is a thing now. Anyone run a right technical girl to the tune of material girl. I think this is brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Let's yeah, do I'm it. Funny. I'm funny. I'm funny. Are the boosted more likely to have Paxlovid rebound? Really? I didn't know that was that a thing, true? Michael. Where's the data? 
I was going to say, I didn't know that that was true. And is the Geneva study that you have mentioned a few times about infectivity of vax versus unvax, the Puhak et al. study in Nature Medicine? It might be. Let's look it up. P-U-H-A-C-H. Nature Medicine. That could do it. Yeah, infectious viral load in vaccinated and unvaccinated. That's it. That is it, Brian. Mm -hmm. uh, do I need to protect myself while flying due to the monkeypox? Well, no, you're not going to touch anyone, right? Plus, why would you not be fully clothed on a plane? Well, you don't, I don't think you need to be uh, unclothed to get monkeypox. You could just do it with a hand nose thing, right? Yeah, but I think that that's rare. I, think it's no, I, I don't think there's a risk uh, flying, no. Are those UVC lights even validated? Well, I bet there are ones that are not validated, right? You can imagine. We had a guy talk about this on Twitter a while ago. Remember that guy from Colombia who did far yeah, UV? I do. I'm, and I it's, do. Yes, it's, it has to be properly calibrated. You're absolutely right. And if you just buy a little one that's made in a small country, I will not name any particular country because I don't want to impugn them. Who knows, right? <laughs> when did Mark Palanche retire? <laughs> when did he retire? Uh, so I wrote to him last year. Uh, he was, I would say he retired in 2020, 2020. Because we saw people from the CDC and he was still there and he had been put in the respiratory division for SARS-CoV-2. And then when I wrote him last year, he said to me he was retired. I should talk to Kara. So I would say somewhere between the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021. I will never call myself retired because I'm always available to help. Okay, in any way, teaching, writing, podcasting, video, advice, scientific, of course, and in my, my lane, my virus lane. I would never want to just re retreat somewhere and disconnect me, myself, from all the people that I can help. Does that make sense, Amy? Yeah, it does. But I think I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't impugn Mark or Roland for... No, I'm not. I'm not impugning them. I'm just saying this. it doesn't appeal to me in the least. Well, I understand, but... But everyone's you know. different, and I totally get yeah. that. And, and Roland is a forester. Right? He's the tree man. Yeah, he moved up to Rhineland and he became a forest guy. Yeah. He got certified. This is kind of cool. You should go do a pod with Roland and learn about forestry. No, no, I, I, I don't want to learn about forestry. I, I've already done a pod with him on viruses. That's enough. I don't okay. Know. I think you and Dixon could go talk to Roland. Could Environmental loves you. Oh, that's cute. I like them. They're yes, nice. Redfield also said gain of function was the cause of SARS-CoV-2. Yeah. I mean, this is just... Hey, can we stop talking about this, man? Just let him retire okay. peacefully and Oh, look at dissipate. this. What would Jonas Salk think of the current poll? So actually... Say... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> his son was interviewed by NPR. Peter. Which one? Peter? The guy I interviewed? Yeah. Okay, what did he have to say? He that his dad would be dismayed by the lack that by the lack of vaccination uptake. Yeah, well, that, we're all dismayed by that, right? But um, I talked to Jeff Kluger uh, the other day, and I said, as you know, uh, since you wrote a book about Salk, uh, he would be very dismayed. I think I, Sabin would even be more pissed off. So here's the thing, Amy. Let's do a hypothetical, all right? Are you game? Yeah, I'm game. Can I be Sabin? You can be Salk. I want to be Sabin. I was going to say, we never <laughs> switch. We never switch to OPV globally. We just use IPV forever. We have no more paralysis, but wild viruses continue to circulate, yeah. right? Yeah, it would have been fine. 
But you still have to keep vaccinating. You could never stop. Yeah, but we would never, but you would have no more paralysis. So it would be fine. Nobody would, you know. And uh, yes, I interviewed J uh, Peter Salk. Is it Peter? Yes. Yeah. Uh, on yeah. his, on Salk 100th birthday. Yeah. And Les points that out. Thank you, Les. Yeah. Um, at the Salk Institute. So, so basically what the OP, what the OPV did is to replace wild viruses, wild polio viruses, correct? Yes. And now we're stuck with reverted vaccine derived viruses, which are neurovirulent. Yes. I'd say it was, is that a win lose situation? <laughs> Because you won by preventing polio, but now you lose because you can't stop vaccinating. And finally, yes. the last thing I want to say about this before moving on. What Amy would say is it wasn't well thought out when they started the eradication program with OPV, right? Yes. Do you think I know you? Yes. But the thing is, is like it wasn't well. It answers. wasn't. It wasn't well thought out in 1989 because Maybe we didn't have the by data, that time. Right? Well, no, but by that time, I believe the I believe there is a paper by Saul Sabin. Maybe it's after that, but by that time, a, a, acute flaccid paralysis had become a clinical disease, and it's caused by 18 other enteroviruses. So polio is really only a subset of of afm yeah, of right. a, of a so so now they've they so it's really a subset of afp because to be diagnosed with polio you only have to have polio virus uh, to be diagnosed with paralytic poliomyelitis you only have to have, have polio virus to be diagnosed with afm or enterovirus associated afm i don't care about the virus you have to have an mri can a non-virus show that there's to show that there's lesions in the in in the at the spinal at the spine in the nerves that are next to the spinal cord. Um, okay, Ian, thank you very much for your contribution and your kind words. A global treasure. Well, that's very nice. Good. We, hope, this, we would like to make this treasure last forever. Okay, Be, which means beyond Vinny. So we're trying to do that. I'm vaccinated against smallpox in 1980. Am I protected? Yes, you're protected. Most likely. Just remember that if you vaccinate 100 people with even the best vaccine, not all of them are going to make antibodies or T cells or whatever. Okay? That's the vagaries of human genetics. So, yeah, and most people will be protected. But if you're the one that's not, I told you so. Okay, Deanna, there is a titer test. There's an antibody test for polio. But don't do it because, as Amy has found, it's meaningless because other enteroviruses, not polio, but related to polio, can induce antibodies that will cross-react with polio. And if you don't, if you don't find a way to, to sort that out, you're not going to get an answer. Really? I don't know what my whole research program is all about then. Do you? No, oh, you're going to sort it out in the next 10 years, right? Yeah. Here you go. Peoples. Here we go. Michael gets it. Cross-reactivity of antibody strikes again. That's Amy, right? That's me. This show is way better than anything on TV. Thank you, uh, Richard. Appreciate your, your kind words. We have fun and we like to talk. So Amy and I like to talk about viruses. And, you know, I would argue that our that this program has evolved, right? It's, it's to the point now where we have little conversations with each other, with you guys, and you learn as a consequence. Don't you think that's correct, Amy? Yeah, because before I just used to tell you you were wrong and then we'd have a big argument. And what do we do now? You tell me I'm wrong and we discuss, right? Yeah, we discuss. And then I end up saying you're right? Yes. I don't understand how that's a healthy thing for me. You're learning. Healthy? What's not healthy about learning? At my age, I'm still learning. Of course, of course I am. Of course, I'm right. still learning. Here is some 
Uh, here's a good question. Look, Michael, why do some countries use OPV when it can spread polio? What's its advantage? Amy, go ahead. It is more effective in reducing um, par uh, cases of paralytic disease. So IPV didn't really re didn't really reduce the level of the cases of paralytic disease as well as OPV does because you get gut immunity and uh, that's the site of infection. So that's why Sabin thought you should use OPV, and he eventually showed that you could convince people to use OPV because, and sometimes if you don't inactivate the virus, the vaccine of IPV appropriately, then you give people infectious virus, like the cutter episode, which was not good. Not the, other, uh, the other advantage of OPV is it's very easy to take. It's, and it's, cheap, it's, it's right? also, I was going to say, it's also very easy and very inexpensive. It's like five cents compared to IPV, which is like two ninety five. So if you're a poor country, then you just line people up and you give them sugar cubes and they just drink it. It's very cheap. And it gets rid of the uh, evasion of needles because it's just sugar water. Is it reasonable to say that UV light inactivates pathogens by giving them a sunburn? I don't know what a sunburn means. No, no they, it, it causes genetic lesions. Yeah, it causes lesions in the DNA or the RNA. Yeah, it's sunburn, nice sunburn is from when you you heat your skin up too much and it blisters. Well, oh, what it must Different. make doesn't it make something that gives you the red? It makes color? the heat. Yeah, but that's a burn. Like if you burn yourself with heat, you get red. All right, so it's the same thing. Like it's done. Yeah, it's All right, basically well, the same. Okay, if a consumer device is not intense enough to sunburn the skin of the user, would it be unlikely to damage a pathogen? I, I don't think there's any relationship to you. No. Because we have UV lights in the lab that are very effective at uh, inactivating pathogens, but I don't think they'd give you a, a burn. No. All right, these two listening is sending wine now, okay? Oh, very nice. Send it to the incubator and I'll come pick it up. I like red. How do you find polio vaccine records by state? You go to the state health department. Yeah, I think you, you go and you All ask. This, a lot of, uh, yeah. Uh, you, people have been doing this. I've gotten emails about it. Some people say they can't find it, and they say, oh, they found it finally. So um, if I got OPV as a child 40 years ago, am I still protected, Amy? Yes. Yes, you are protected, as long as you got the full series, right? Because if, if you didn't get the full series, you should you should get an IPV. Yeah. Yes. Uh, didn't the pox vaccine give people a big, ugly scar on their arm? If you have a big, ugly scar, then you probably had the pox vaccine, right? Well, it doesn't give a big, ugly scar in everyone. I, I, I don't, I can't even You see have a one. little bit of a scar. And some people have a tiny scar. Some people have a huge scar. And then scars can be called by other things. But this is a very distinctive round, uh, recessed scar. And so if you have that, yeah, then you got smallpox vaccine. Do you have one, Amy? No, you didn't get it. You're too young. Should I get a fifth COVID-19 vaccine dose? Why? All right. So you look like a young person, right? You're healthy? No. You don't need it. Can I get it from someone on a plane? Actually, as vanity... Can I get it as what? Anything. What is it? Any infectious oh. disease. As Vanity Nutrition will say, once the plane pushes back, the big fans turn on that push the <laughs> air down through HEPA filters. And Daniel did a nice paper today showing that HEPA filters indeed trap SARS-CoV-2 particles. So, you know, that's why flight attendants live so long. They breathe that nicely filtered air. And they uh, die quickly from the stress of the unruly customer. 
<laughs> Indeed. I wouldn't want to deal with that. <laughs> Wikipedia's entry on Redfield describes both his abstinence-only prevention and the DOD investigation of his misrepresentation of data. Yeah. What a guy to put in charge of CDC. Guys, what anti science. Oh, this is interesting. What do I know about the Japanese stockpiled smallpox? LC 16MA read a paper from Inger Damon recently. I don't know. I'm going to ask. Um, Where's my... Our condit. Let me write I would that ask down. the other guy. I would ask the Barta man. LC 16M8 Japanese smallpox. Do I have another question to ask? Uh, yeah, an, an activation. So Inger Damon is a really good pox virologist at the CDC, and she won't come on TWIV. Rich tried to get her, but she won't come on. Why Why not? Uh, she's too busy. Why don't you ask the Parta guy? You I just know. had him on. Well, you can email him and ask him. Oh, ask him not to come on TWIV, but ask him the question. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to ask him for sure. Yep. Why doesn't Callista come on? She's all about the vaccine. Callista who? I don't know. Every time you talk about Jenner and the vaccine, he says, Callista's working on it. Oh, the lady in, in Brazil. I don't know. How do I know? He just oh. keeps saying Callista's working no, on it. No, it's not Callista. Callista. It. It's somebody else. It's I forgot her name. I know. But she's working on something, and when when it's done, she's going to come on and talk about it. Yeah. So thank you, Lucky. I'm going to find out about that. So complicated. Hurts my brain. Oh, environmental is west of Ithaca. Very nice. Uh, last, It's called the Washington Book Fair, Amy. Yeah, I looked it up. I looked it up. It's at the convention center. It's Labor Day weekend. Can you, How many viruses can you name that cause cancer? I can cause, I can name a lot of them. So we could we could start with HIV. We could start with hepatitis C virus, hepatitis B virus, Merkel cell uh, polyoma virus, the papilloma viruses. Yeah, the papilloma viruses. HPVs. HPVs. You could do Ralph sarcoma. You could do a lot of retroviruses. Yeah, well, you just want to stay in humans. So, yeah. Well, there are some TLV. Uh, Moosewood, I tried to get into Moosewood. It was a bit too crowded in a, because this is move-in week and all the damn parents are there bringing their kids. So I went across the street to another place. I don't remember the name of it. And then last night I went to an Italian place. So you, you must know uh, the Cafe uh, Sandis, right? <clears throat> and next to it, there's an Italian restaurant, Marzano or something. That's where I ate last night. It was really good. Best IPA is flower power. I don't think I had flower power. That's something else. I don't remember what it is. Uh, what do you make of the Thai study and higher rate of myocarditis than originally thought from the vaccine and lack of Pfizer providing their own follow-up research? What am I supposed to make of it? It is what so, it is. So it is what it is. It's a higher rate. But I remember saved a lot of lives and myocarditis is treatable and daniel always says the risk the the benefits outweigh the risk you know nothing has zero risk right amy exactly this podcast has a risk what's that i get yelled on on twitter and all this other stuff yeah but don't yell at amy on twitter okay it's not these people it's other people you know what the risk is of this live stream you could learn something yeah, that's not good either. <laughs> uh, here, Amy, do cross-reactive antibodies by anaerobes afford any neutralization benefits against polio? Sometimes. No, you can't do one answer question. Uh, answer one word. So some of the anymore. ones. So some. So we showed that there are, that they can protect against polio, and polio can protect against other ones, right? Yeah, but we only looked at one mechanism of neutralization, and we did, and because we did it in tissue culture. But you can imagine that there are other that we've missed a lot because there are other mechanisms 
by which you can protect cells and culture. You can protect against the development of disease by cross-reactive neutralizing antibodies, right? FC receptor function, blah, 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 right? In our right. assays, we did not look at that, right? And uh, on the caveat is you can also, our assays don't really pick up that the uh, other one, right? Where you could have disease enhancement because of cross-reactive antibodies or the lack of cross-reactive antibodies. Right. right. So you, we need to do a lot more work using animal models. So we need to develop a lot of animal models. So that's what my lab does, right? Or part of what my lab will do is develop animal models because these suck. Amy, so Fox in the Snow says, I will come at anyone who yells at Amy on Twitter. I got to work out first, though. Oh, okay. And Les says, isn't COVID a bigger risk of myocarditis than vaccine? Yes, absolutely. Yes, no but why focus on the details? It doesn't fit the narrative. <laughs> the narrative. Wow. Yeah, the narrative. It doesn't fit the story that people want to talk about. What was I going to ask everyone here? I wanted to ask a question of our... Oh, so someone said, one of the students said at the Cornell thing I went to, you need to get the two podcast hosts from this podcast will kill you on TWIV. So tell me if I should do that. I, They're epidemiologists, you know. You know what I think about epidemiologists. There, so the 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 two there's a podcast of two epidemiologists, and he wants you to have these two hosts. These one of the two students epidemiologists. said, "Yeah, one of the that, students. right." We should have more epidemiologists on TWIV. We already gave Jeff Shaman like three episodes of TWIV, all about R not, which is a made up number. Oh, I got an email hating you about that today. You know. Oh goody! Oh goody! You know what I said? I usually don't answer. This guy said, oh, Amy's all wrong about Arnaud. And I said, I've never met anything Amy is all wrong about. I think you better rethink. <laughs> that's that's, pretty, that's usually pretty I don't. much correct. Hey, listen, that's young lady, I defend you. I, I rarely answer those kinds of emails, but I was in a weak moment. That's totally correct. I think the person needs to reassess. He might want to get out his extra large big buying calculator. Make sure that when he plugs in two plus two, he gets four, not five. All right. Um, let's go here. What's worse? Constant stress, cortisol, anxiety, or higher risk of exposure to COVID? Well, if you're me, it's the constant stress, cortisol, and anxiety. You get immune suppression, your hair falls out, and you get double pneumonia for like five years. So that's I don't know not what good. you mean, which is worse. Um, I mean, everything can have its consequences. So it's really hard to compare different situations. That's what I tell my students in, in when I talk about virulence. You can't you compare can't, you can't, different you situations. No. I was being funny about my hair falling out. But it's true, it did. Uh, Ian, thank you again. I'm incensed by the BS from the nurse educator from the UK who put out a video titled Monkeypox Homosexual Spread, in which he called it a sexually transmitted disease infection. That's just, irrespon this? That's just irresponsible. He should be banned from YouTube for that irresponsibility and the hatred that is displayed against a certain group of people. That's just irresponsible. I think you need to really speak out, right? If you can, and every more, a lot of people, like everybody here, if they so agree, and they should, because it's not a sexually transmitted disease, they should speak out. And but you know, this is what people like. That's why they get a lot of views. Yeah, but it's, it's irresponsible. It was irresponsible in the '80s when Reagan labeled the HIV as the gay disease, and it's never the stigma has still never actually left that disease in that course, population is is tremendously burdened by that. And then to have it repeated like 40 years later is just a setback to all of our social advances to understanding members of those different communities. So it's just totally irresponsible and YouTube should be appalled that they let that they have yeah. not re voluntarily yeah, removed it. Well, if it is YouTube, you could report it. Yeah, for sure do that but you shouldn't have to they should actually voluntarily remove it disaster 
Um, yeah, so I wanted to mention this about the TIE study. So Gribbler makes a good point. There's a question as to whether the abnormal heart readings were indicative of adverse effects. Only 1 in 300 had confirmed myo, which is higher than the other rate, of course. But there's some issues with that study uh, as well, yeah. Uh, how likely is it that boosting frequently could result in disrupting the immune system, causing other illnesses? I think it's unlikely. Um, I asked that of Paul Offit. And he said the only thing he was worried about was uh, imprinting, right? Yes. Where you make, if you keep boosting with something different, you just make a response against the first antigen that you saw. And that's not useful, of course. Uh, a friend said her pro health doc in Connecticut would not give her husband Paxlovid. Uh, so yes, you got to find someone to give Paxlovid because you don't have a lot of time, right? You need to do it early on and as soon as you test positive. So sometimes the pharmacists will, but sometimes I've heard people say the pharmacist won't give it to me. We get reports, and in, in Canada, it's very hard to get apparently um, because I don't know. I can ask. What I I can ask my friends who still live in Canada. No, but for Canadians, they only have they have very restrictive uh, requirements for co for Paxlovid, unfortunately, or maybe that was Evie Shell. I don't remember, but you have to really fight hard and get it because Daniel says you should have it for sure. Your age alone allows you to have it. Mm. Blankets to the Indians. Yes, that was smallpox. Okay. They transmitted smallpox to Native Americans um, with blankets. Yes, that's the, as Brianne said, that's the famous blanket experiment. But um, what are you talking about? Brianne says it. I say it. I told you all Amy, the time. Amy, about. taking it out of context. Well, she in the last twiff, she just quipped, okay? Because we were saying you're not going to get it from blankets in the hotels, and she said, "Well, there's the famous blanket experiment, but that was smallpox, which is far more contagious than monkeypox." Yeah, right? I know. The war of eight, uh, war of six, uh, the French and Indian War of six of uh, sixteen eighteen or something around there. How about 1640. cats? I like I don't cats. Know that. I, what about? I've it? never heard of cats having smallpox. Well, what about monkeypox? I've never heard of a cat getting pox virus, but I yeah. don't. I'm not a feline person, and I'm not a vet, so it's not my lane. Yeah, I, I, that's a good question. I haven't seen any cat infections yet. But they're different from dogs. They're not the same species. Excuse me. I have cats that sleep everywhere, but I don't think they're monkey cats. Is that a joke? Yes. <laughs> that's good. Uh, the dog that was infected was an Italian greyhound, very short-haired dog breed that likes to snug with you. Ah, oh, that's cute. It's nice when dogs like to snug to humans. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I don't have a dog anymore, so, but yeah. yeah I, I'm not aware of the name change yet, but apparently they want to change the name. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Jens Kuhn is going to go for it. Jens Kuhn? But he has to work with them because WHO and, and ICTV work together on virus naming. So J yeah, Jens I don't is think very, he is a very reasonable guy. He will work with them until they find something that works. Yeah. Okay, I mean, do you want to do you want to name it after the real reservoir? Well, I don't think it should be called rodent pox. That doesn't sound good. The sounding sounding good doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter, Amy. Well, I don't think that it's a better rodent pox. How about, that has bad connotation. Too. How about we call it Manolo pox after the shoes? But that's a guy's name, right? We don't want to do that. Yeah, that's the guy's name. His name I is Manolo Blahnik. He lives in the Canary Islands. He's Spanish. I didn't know it was a name. Yeah. What, what's a shoe name that we could use for the for the virus? It doesn't identify anyone. How about uh, loafer pox? Loafer pox? Yeah, loafer is not going to insult anyone, right? Sure, go for it. Let me know how that works. What other kind of shoes are there? Uh, uh, moles? What do you mules? call it? You're going to call it a mule? Mule pox, an but that's an animal. But a mule is a shoe, right? Yeah, but it's an animal. What are you going to call it? Stiletto pox? 
I think I started okay. polio vax as a young person, but not sure if series was finished. So yeah, so get sure. vaccinated oh, again. No yeah, side effects. It's a very mild vaccine and as far as vaccines go. Yeah, go get it, please. <laughs> Uh, you can get Faxlovid from pharmacists, but I've gotten emails from people who say my pharmacist denied me my Paxlovid. So, you know, I agree. You should be able to get it from a pharmacist. And maybe you can ask Kip and Laura what, they're, what they would do. TB vaccine might protect immune system against COVID. Yeah, uh, PCs, BG, it's all innate in induction of innate immunity. It's getting blown out of proportion. Why is it blown out? And of the proportion? people, I, I don't know, because it protects against a variety of different diseases. And the people who like wrote the paper, are like, we don't know what the mechanism is, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, could you say induction of interferon? Yeah. I don't know what more they want than that, right? I don't know, but the people who were who the authors of the paper who were interviewed were like, we don't really know what the mechanism is. And I was like, you might want to give back your degree because it's called induction of interferon. Learn something about the innate immune system. What did Mark Palanche mean by we couldn't explain if we found polio in the wastewater? <laughs> well, it's like what the CDC is I think it's pretty now. clear. The I think CDC it's pretty clear. The CDC right now doesn't know how to explain this, right? Because as Amy right, said, because we've said all of this time that it was eradicated, which meant it was no longer on the planet, and it has always been here. And now you want to find out. So the person who is the paralytic individual, the yeah, the guy who developed paralytic disease, he's just the flak assay to demonstrate that it's there. There's tons of other people who are shedding virus that are, so you're never going to find patient zero because he's not patient zero. Uh, so Leah lost blood during his surgery. He wants to know if he can get his flu shot in September or should he wait? Sure. Go I don't ahead, think it's a problem. I think by September you're good and, and it's not going to impact your lymph nodes. <laughs> Is it established that Genios becomes ineffective after its expiration? All right, so here's the thing. They test it up to three years, and they don't test beyond that, so you don't know. So you can't use it. with most things that have an expiration date, they've tested it to that point in time and not further, and so they stop at that point. But in, in fact, it might be good, right? But you just don't know. So as you say, yeah, it might have a longer shelf life, but it might not be documented, yeah. Where can one get vaccinated in the New York City metropolitan area? I presume vaccinated you mean for what? For monkeypox. It's hard to find. But yeah, New York, is, so it, what's interesting is, so that uh, so they you can get vaccinated at, at, like freely at pharmacies all the time for SARS-CoV-2. It's hard to find for for monkeypox. And they're adamant that they're not going to set up a polio vaccination center. Good plan. I like that plan. Um, did you tell us so if you haven't told us who? Sure, yeah. I can make the rules up too. <laughs> this is about the person who's going to replace Fauci. We well, okay. told you so that we knew who it was. That's what we can say. <laughs> Did I ever get your sec second shingles vaccine? I never got the first. I have a whole list of medical things I have to do. I'll get to it. The nose is growing Pinocchio. Oh, stop it. I'm going to take care <laughs> of these things. It's not nice. <laughs> Why was polio vaccine changed from trivalent to bivalent in two, 2016? Go ahead, Amy. Because type me. 2 was declared eradicated, and so they felt that they didn't need to include it anymore because it would just lead to more vaccine-derived type 2. What they didn't understand was the further out you go from having it incorporated in the vaccine, the more prevalent type 2 cases become. Because they circulate? Yeah. So why haven't they removed type 3 from the vaccine? That's been eradicated. I was recently declared eradicated, and why make the same mistake twice? 
such a deadpan look you have there, Amy. It's true. How many types of polio vaccine are there? Two. Oral, oral, and infectious, oral and infectious and injectable and inactivated. It's two types. Can vinegar kill viruses on surfaces? What's the pH of vinegar, uh, Amy? Do you know? Glacial acetic acid is like pH 2. Well, people can't buy glacial, right? What percentage is glacial? 37. Oh, because we, we, have, we have gallons of 30% vinegar. It's close enough. We don't use it for disinfecting. We use it to kill weeds. We okay. Mix, we mix it with uh, household uh, soap, uh, dish detergent, and we spray it on the weeds, and they die overnight. It's amazing. Okay. Well, you have super clean plants then. Yes, IPV, OPV was used. Instead of going uh, cold turkey to IPV, they did uh, one followed by the other. Then they went all IPV in some countries, not all countries. Um, this is my first time seeing Amy on your podcast with all caps. I love her calm, understated demeanor. And I like this. Maybe sulk would sulk. Isn't that great? That's cute. That's very cute. That's what you should make on a T-shirt. Sulk would sulk. I, I, actually, I wouldn't wear that T-shirt. It's too. It's too and, and Palanche actually said that. Yes. He did say it. Amy and I have witnessed it, right? Twice. I find it interesting that the conversation here shifted from COVID to polio to, to monkey. But yeah, the polio and monkeypox. That's what is people are thinking about. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, so is it safe to say I should stay away from the wastewater testing equipment the water department just dumped off at our transfer station with the simple warning of don't touch it? <laughs> well, you, uh, yeah, you shouldn't mess with it, but you know that yeah don't mess with it don't you don't you agree amy yeah for your information the southern hemisphere flu season started and peaked way too way early per who and eddie holmes okay that's interesting what do you think about that amy what do you think um is the yeah. reason for that do you think it has to do with Masking and distancing and so forth. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yes, it kind of looks like we're sitting next to each other because this seam here, at first glance, it looks seamless, right? Because it's dark. If I didn't have this wood here, you couldn't tell, right? Maybe I should get a black thing and put it here. <clears throat> then it would look like all one room, Amy. What do you think? Okay. Why do some vaccines give you lifetime immunity and others only immunity for a limited period? Well, that's the uh, that's the question, isn't it? If we knew the not answer, all, not all things work the same way. If we knew the answer, we could make all vaccines last forever. But we don't know what confers longevity, and longevity is in part due to memory B and T cells, right? And so how do you get a vaccine to efficiently induce those? We don't really know. It's not very straightforward. My brother, pediatrician, recommends getting flu in October. Yeah, I think that's a good, that's a good time to get it, October. Amy, what if we use NOPV? Yeah, you could do that, but you have to, you'd still have to survey. Because some of the alterations may not be as effective as you think. Well, recombination, as he said, he said it himself here. Look, oh, that's right, recombinants, yeah, shit. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so at least one of the alterations within the polymerase really doesn't have an effect on recombination. Yeah. Like, it's just, like people have suggested, so it's totally wrong. Uh, Inger Damon would be a cool guest. Yeah, I, I said, we asked her. She doesn't want to come on. Will the f booster shot with flu and Omicron included? No, not now. Maybe that will be, but it has to be tested, right, Amy? Yeah, I don't I'm think not it's sure you happen. can make. I'm not sure you can make a. I'm not sure you can do a flu and Omicron booster. Yeah, See, hit the like button. We're almost at 400, folks. Just you know, five wow. minutes left. That's good. That would be cool. I don't think we ever got the 500 likes, did we? Thank you, know. Morris, for your support. Really appreciate it. I found my old vaccine records from Hong Kong and I'm vaccinated against polio and smallpox in 65 and 66. Isn't that great to find those records? I don't have it my smallpox, fabulous. but I have my polio records, yeah. Uh, Amy, where does Charlotte get the polio vaccine? Go to any doctor. Yeah, I think any doctor would be able to get it for you because I think Charlotte's in Florida, if I remember. So you have to go to a doctor. I don't know what the rules are in Florida. It's a crazy state. I asked uh, last week about smallpox, if it would protect me from monkeypox. On Daniel's update, he was saying to get another vaccine. No. I don't totally that's, wrong. That's not right. Uh, unless you're at high risk for monkeypox, you don't need to be revaccinated. No. Totally wrong. Uh, according to BC, most drugstores have a polio vaccine. Okay. I don't know. I don't live in Florida. I don't know anything about it. Or PV. OPV means oral polio vaccine. Does COVID change your DNA? No. no. Not discussing any stupid questions like that any further. No, no question is stupid. We just say, no, it doesn't. I don't want to tell people their questions are stupid or not good, okay? Well, guy who is at MIT who wrote the paper should be appalled. I, I asked Fischat about it. You'll be amused at his response. Do you say the guy should be given back his PhD? No, but he said that it's, well, he said a second study didn't find any integration at all. So he said it's totally not clear that it even happens. Well, of course it doesn't happen. I've been wearing N95 since the pandemic. My new PA told me none of the masks work because of the size of the virus. The, it, the masks don't stop virus particles. They stop water droplets containing virus particles, okay? So they don't know what they're talking about. It's the droplets you expel from your respiratory tract that get hung up in the masks, all right? Uh, OPV rarely can give you typolia. Uh, yeah, rarely is one in one and a half million doses. That in the U.S. used to be 8 to 12 kids a year. So if you were their parent, I guess you're saying it as an informational thing. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Never mind. Is is soil enough to stimulate your immune system or do you need human to hum, human viruses? We don't know. We have absolutely need no, don't know. And I don't think we've, we can do that study. Soil is a technical term. <laughs> it is. It's interesting. And there's a, a long discussion now of soil versus dirt. That's great. I love it. How well, frequently, I have dirt. I, how frequently do they revert? In every recipient, yes. In every recipient, OPV reverts, yeah. And how frequently do they all... So if you go like... 96 hours after vaccination, it's all reversion. Yep. All three types have reversed. Yes. And so if you read an article that said they may revert, that's not correct. They revert in everyone. Thank you, Connor, for your support. What do you think about iodine nasal sprays? I don't think much of them. I think they're a transient protection at best. Is Omicron I don't think I want to make my nose orange. Is Omicron natural immunity worth anything? Yes, yeah. it's worth it's worth something, but don't get infected on purpose, right? If you happen to get infected, that's fine. Why would I do that? I saw on an airline site that to travel to the U.S. you need to be fully vaccinated. 
Well, uh-huh. there's a definition on the CDC website, okay? Um, I would just go there and look for it because I don't want to take the time. I don't remember it, and I don't want to make a mistake. But it's on the CDC. Fully vaccinated has somewhat changed. Um, I, don't, I think it's at least the two doses plus a booster But it, for most people. And if you're older, it may include another dose. Um, so Geoplanet Planet Jane has not vetoed your brain power, Amy. It's good. All right, let's uh, scroll through here and thank our donors before we wrap up. There's some more great questions here. I'm sorry sorry, I can't get to them all. Um, thank you, Doreen, for your contributions. I really appreciate your support of science communication. It's always uplifting that not only do all of you come and uh, have a great conversation, but you support us. My mom said OPV was pink. Yeah, it's pink because of the cell culture fluid that uh, that contains phenol red, right, Amy? Yes. P- Amy has bottles and bottles of medium that are red. Mm-hmm. I know this because I shipped them to her. I used them all. You used them all up? New. Yeah, I bought new. You know, the, the, the thing that I really... Uh, feel badly about is that there's so many great comments, but we have to shut this down now here at uh, at 10 p.m. because yeah. we're two hours. Yeah, my bedtime. Amy needs to – actually, I bet Amy hasn't had dinner yet. No, I haven't had dinner yet. You see? So I, I can't keep her up anymore, and I can't keep you guys up in the mods. So thanks to our mods tonight. We had Steph. We had Frank. We had Les. We had – Vanity. Vanity nutrition. Thank you all for coming on an odd night. Next week we'll be here at Wednesday. Thanks everybody else for coming. 450 people. We got over 400 likes. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, do come back next week. We love uh, having you here. We love chatting amongst you. And uh, meanwhile, be safe until we see you next week. Thanks everybody. Good night. Good night.